Is Psalm 22 really about the crucifixion? Hey everybody, I'm Dan McClellan. I'm a scholar of the Bible and religion. Let's take a look at a video. So there is a question Christians get asked all the time to disprove their faith. They get asked this question to challenge them on their faith. And God has revealed something to me that has blown my mind. All right, let's see it. So the question Christians usually get asked is, why would Jesus on the cross, when he's being crucified, say out loud, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? If Jesus is God, why would Jesus say that? Well, this story only occurs in the Gospels of Mark and Matthew, which absolutely don't represent Jesus as God. Uh, but additionally, it is a literary creation. Uh, this is not what Jesus actually said on the cross, or at least there are no data that support that. Most likely, uh, putting the opening words of the lament of Psalm 22 in Jesus' mouth as he hangs on the cross was something that an author wrote, not that Jesus actually said. Well, well, Jesus was quoting scripture. <laughs> yep, get ready. I would think that most published Bibles these days make it pretty clear that this passage is a quotation from Psalm 22. This is Psalm 22. Psalm 22, right here. I've gone through both of my Bibles, right here. Psalm 22, listen to this. The first line. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Sound familiar? I'm not going to read the whole of Psalm 22. I want you guys to go away and read it in your Bible. But the prophecy in this Psalm alone is unbelievable. Let me read one example. Psalm 22 is not a prophecy. Psalm 22 is a specific genre of psalm called a lament, and more specifically, an individual complaint, a God complaint. And it follows a very strict pattern, where the individual addresses God, and then using questions like lama, why, or admatai, how long, they will complain to God, and then they will tell God about their past saving deeds as motivation for helping them. And then they will usually describe their lamentable state of affairs and then offer a petition like, be near to me, deliver me, save me, help me. And there frequently are cycles of complaints, petition, complaint, petition, complaint, petition. None of this is a prophecy. This is a psalm of complaint. A company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I'm getting goosebumps. So this is a mistranslation, pure and simple. The text absolutely does not say they pierced my hands and my feet. The Masoretic text says, like a lion, ka'ari, my hands and my feet. Now, if we go look at the ancient Greek translation, the Septuagint, it uses the verbal root oriso, which means to dig out. And this seems to be based on understanding ka'ari as uh, the verbal root ka'ra, kaf resh he, which is not what the Masoretic text has. But that verbal root would mean to dig out. And it's possible that we have a variant form of that verbal root in the Dead Sea Scrolls. But to dig out also does not mean to pierce because both the Hebrew root kara and the Greek root oriso refer to material being removed and the semantic focus is on the space that is left behind or on the material that is being removed. And that is not piercing. Piercing is to drive something through something else. So the way these verbs are used does not support piercing. Piercing is just an attempt to squint at a verb that means something differently until the edges blur and you can say, oh, it kind of reminds me of this concept of what happened at Jesus' crucifixion. This is not an attempt to understand what this text most likely was saying. This is bringing a predetermined conclusion to the text and saying, now I just have to convince myself that this is a possible reading of this text. And if that's all you're doing, guess what? You're going to succeed. That's the nature of dogmatism and bias, is you are a remarkably easy person to convince of the conclusion that you desperately want to convince yourself is true. So, they pierced my hands and my feet is a mistranslation, pure and simple. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. 
So you'll recall that the only two Gospels that have Jesus quoting Psalm 22 on the cross are Mark and Matthew, the two earliest Gospels. Neither of them has the story about the Roman soldiers casting lots for Jesus' garments. That is only found in Luke and John, the two latest Gospels. So what we have here are two different sets of authors who are interpreting Jesus' crucifixion in light of Psalm 22 and telling the story in different ways so that Jesus is fulfilling what they are interpreting as a prophecy in Psalm 22, even though it's not a prophecy. So this is literary craftsmanship. This is not history fulfilling a prophecy. Guys, Jesus was quoting scripture on the cross. Ah, I love Jesus, man. He is the best. Ah, I genuinely got goosebumps. And that is precisely why the authors told the story the way that they did, in order to draw these lines of connection and in order to make it more meaningful, more useful, and more powerful to the reader or the hearer. Again, this is literary craftsmanship, not history. And the fit for this video has been a black and white version of Jim Lee's X-Men number 11 cover.